What's up, everyone? My name is Jelanese, and welcome to Locked In. This will be a weekly show where we talk about all the ins and outs of Deadlock, be it patch notes, new heroes, the whole nine yards. But it's not just me. With me, I've got two fantastic co-hosts in Mangoose and the Viking Jedi. Welcome, guys. Happy to have you here. Happy to start this off with our first episode. But let's go across both of you. Mangoose, talk a bit about yourself and who you are, what you do, what characters you like, and then Viking, do the same afterwards. What's up, everybody of the Mangoose? You are awesome. I am a Yamato main and an Ivy main. I play them both fairly equally anymore. Um, way more games on Yamato than I have on Ivy, but I do have quite a few games. I'm probably the most experienced player out of all of us. That doesn't mean I'm the best player. It just means I've been playing probably the most deadlock out of everybody <laughs> here. Um, but yeah, that's it. Over to you, Viking Jedi. Uh, I don't have like a, a, a fun, cool youtuber <laughs> entrance into this whole thing so but yeah no i'm i'm the viking jedi uh i'm i'm the newbie of the group i've got like maybe like 35 ish hours um and most of that actually is like from when when most of us first got into it and then i took a huge huge break um and only recently and probably the last week or so put in some more recent games and there's been a lot of changes so i'm having a lot of catch up <laughs> so i feel like a brand new new player like yeah but I, i'm attempting to be a mcginnis main i still really like seven seven was like the first love that i had in the game um but i don't know if i pilot him well enough to take him away from somebody else who probably will play them better um and i'm also a toxic bebop enjoyer oh god <laughs> that's all bebop enjoyers they're all just toxic yeah. you don't even have to add that part in it's just a given at this point it's just a given yeah <laughs> Perfect. Well, in future episodes, guys, what this is going to be is this will be our clip of the week where we'll get submissions from everybody watching the show. We'll be able to bring that up on screen. And what that'll do is there'll be a link in the description for you guys to go to that will be where you can upload those files so we can take a look and kind of have those going forward. But for now, let's kind of move into our patch review, patch breakdown side of the show, guys. And I realized the patch happened a little over a week ago, but we got a new hero, we got lane changes, we got lane structure changes. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. Let's kind of start out with Mirage and how we're feeling about Mirage and the whole nine yards. Mangoose, I'll let you kick this off. I, th I think anytime um, when you have a MOBA or, you know, Deadlock is combination, third person shooter, MOBA, whatever, but any sort of MOBA like game, you want a hero with a global ultimate. Um, and Mirage brings that to the table. He brings that global ultimate. He's always going to be sought after for that reason, no matter what is in the rest of his kit. But the rest of his kit is pretty awesome. Um, I will say, if you look at the, the release, you have Viscous, then you have Shiv, and then you have Mirage, um, the release schedule of the heroes. And if you look at them, you know it, it, it's deadlock. You can build people however you want and be successful with that build. But if you look at their base default kits, it's obvious that Valve intended Viscous to be a tanky support hero, uh, for Shiv to be a spirit damage assassin and now they have mirage who is kind of billed to be a uh a, a weapon damage um dps so yeah. i think it's kind of cool that they're sort of rolling them out like that and complimenting each other um mirage was of course a bit over tuned as you can expect from any game whenever they release a new hero but uh they reeled him back quite a bit and he's uh He's fun to play. He's fun to play against. I, I really enjoy Mirage. I think he's a great addition to the lineup. Yeah, I think after the nerfs, especially when we got that initial set of nerfs on him, that helped bring him into a much better spot mm -hmm. than where he was. And for those that don't know his kit real quick is his one is a tornado, dashes forward, knocks enemies into the air, but they can still take actions like abilities and shoot. His two are scarabs that can go out onto enemy targets, one per enemy that steal max health from them for a time. It's like 20 seconds at base. His three is a multiplier that he stacks on an enemy. The higher the multiplier, the more damage it does. And then his four is a global teleport to allies or enemies, as long as he has vision. Um, and the ultimate doesn't do any damage. Overall, I think it's a great kit, but Viking, kind of where are you at with Mirage? Uh, I mean, I don't really have strong opinions one way or the other. I've only had him on my team and I have not played him yet. So um, I just found it to be a little funny. Like I wasn't expecting it because I didn't really read his kit. Um, one of the guys we were playing with all of a sudden was like, I'm on my way. And he just showed up. I was like, <laughs> oh. so it reminded me kind of similar to uh, from League of Legends, like a Shen ultimate without the shield. But just having someone like randomly popping up in your lane um at least this time it was as an ally so it didn't like matter too much other than just like oh we'll pu push this together i guess uh so th i do agree though uh i i think having a global 
ultimate is always a, a fun addition to MOBAs. Um, and it encourages really creative play, which I'm a big fan of. So um, from that perspective, I'm glad that he exists. Uh, I hope that they've balanced him because that with the global ultimate comes a lot of, you know, opportunities for some <laughs> shenanigans to take place, let's just say. Uh, but no, it seems like they're doing things right. I didn't feel like just because we had uh, a Mirage on our team, it was like an instant win condition. It just felt like a really cool thing, especially in comms. Um, I can see like if you're able to call for the Mirage to come to you or, you know, be able to give the call out, say, hey, Mirage is, you know, could be coming your way, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, just like with Shen playing with Vision, you know, being able to get in and out of Vision so that way they can always have to be aware of where the Mirage might be coming. Um, so I think that's kind of cool, like that aspect of that, you know, they can be anywhere at any moment. So be ready. Yeah, it's cool. And that's the I've played a ton of Mirage since he come out. I've probably put 12 games or 15 games on him, mm -hmm. um, which comparatively, I've only played like 20 games total since he came out. So most of them have been Mirage. But yeah. it's really cool to me to be able to be at those fights instantaneously, like you guys were talking mm -hmm. about, right? Being able to see a 2v1 happen against my team and be like, don't worry, I'm on my way. Like we could stay there. I get, I'll help. I promise. Right. You're not alone is super nice or being able to split push and then teleport to a team fight afterwards. That, that's the kind of stuff that I love seeing Mirages do, but I also see sure. a lot of them that are not utilizing their ult as often as possible. Cause really it's like a 45 second cooldown, 50 second cooldown at the end of the game. It's nuts how often he can teleport around and they're not utilizing it that much. So I would love to see more. It's also, he feels like a spirit hero, but he's actually a weapon hero, which is also mm -hmm. really strange to get my head around. I definitely, I am going to build a guide on him probably later this week, but I need more games to like really feel like I understand what the hero needs to do. <laughs> right. uh, but overall, I think he's a great addition to the game. And I think despite coming out over tuned, I think Valve learned a little bit from Shiv's release where Shiv was literally a win condition. If you had Shiv, oh, you God. won the game. That if mm. just flat, that's all it was, right? And I don't feel like that was as present when Mirage came out. No, yeah, he definitely still took over games. It was not the like instant win that Shiv was, or even Viscous to an extent on release too. And yeah, and Shiv is a, a, a lot easier to play too than Mirage, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that 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 sort of exacerbated that just a little bit. But yeah, great great kit. Uh, his whirlwind, he gets what was it called evasive on the tail end of bullet, that? Yeah, bullet dodge. Yeah, that that is very frustrating whenever I'm. Uh, where I roll an Ivy. Uh, however, playing against him with Yamato, I've come to love it because I know exactly where he's going to be. Like, I'll grapple into him, cancel it early. He whirlwinds. I just immediately 180 yep. and wing a power slash through him, and it's like no problem. Like, where at first it was like, oh my God, what do I do about this guy? I'm constantly <laughs> getting whirlwinded. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's such a weird thing with his kit, too, because if you build around it, you can get pretty high bullet dodge or bullet resist on top of it and take cool. virtually no bullet damage after using your whirl whirlwind. And a lot of people are taking advantage of that by building echo shard and then whirlwinding echo shard whirlwinding a second time, which is just toxic as all hell. But it's it's a good kit. I think they've done a good job with him. I think he's probably going to get a couple more nerfs when the big patch rolls around later this week, but it'll be interesting to see nevertheless. But let's move on to our second topic, which is the distance change on the outer lanes. Now, I know Viking yeah. said he has just come back to the game more recently, so he doesn't know this as much. But Mangoose, how are you kind of feeling about the, the increased map size effectively? I, I really like it. I, I think it opens up the side lanes a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't feel overly um, oppressive to rotate, uh, especially since they increase the speed of the outside zip lines. Yeah. So you get to lane just about the same time everybody else does. Uh, when I really felt I felt it is the first time I picked somebody up with Ivy that had the urn to try and run them from one side of the map to the <laughs> other, and I didn't make it all the way. Like her, her her ult didn't last the entire time without like duration or something like that. Um, that threw me off. That threw me off. But yeah, the the lanes are just way more open. It's easier to both attack and defend, and um, you just got these weird. You used to have these weird angles. A lot of times it made it very hard to um especially as a defender push against the minions because mm -hmm. they were they were just right in your face they would come around that corner and be right in your face there was no line of sight to actually shoot them while they were decently far away especially when you had like a lash or somebody on the enemy team 
and they're in one of those middle lanes and it's just like oh look lash uses his two a single time and he's in the outer lane already <laughs> right extending that helps that so much i don't fear lash showing up on me in two seconds on an outer lane nearly as much as i did previously everybody okay <laughs> Uh, Viking, what are your, I know, like it's been said, but what do you kind of feel about it so far? I mean, the biggest one that I've noticed is that, uh, if I am playing in one of the duo lanes and I notice one of my duos is leaving to go and assist in one of the off lanes that my call out to, you know, um, that laner gives them an actual opportunity to react. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a lot of times it used to feel like, um, that, yeah, what you were describing where it's like, you know, Hey, that guy, I think he backed. Or maybe he's killing like a small camp and then next thing you know he's in out of the lane so you're just like oh, okay I, it, it, it was like instant it felt like it was there was no um there was like no downside to doing it too yeah. like there was no there was no bad play to try and come over and catch one of the laners in the side lanes uh, off guard um especially if you were playing like you know a hyper carry style character that can really take advantage of getting those early kills so yeah. um now it does feel like it's a bit more punishing um to make those rotations if you don't get anything out of it if you get something out of it still if they're not paying attention or whatever or they're they're disrespecting you then you know you deserve to die and that's just how it goes that's that's mombas but um it does feel like the call outs at least in the few games that i played mattered a little bit more and uh and that's that's cool so communication aspects yeah, and I think as the resident more toxic one of the three of us, I will speak for this, <laughs> right? But the thing, it's also on the flip side, more frustrating when your allies don't call that missing because it's like, you had more time to let me know they were coming to my lane and you <laughs> still didn't do it. You, you oh, mean God. you didn't warp your sides? What the heck? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Let me, let me just do that next time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think the wider lanes in general is a good change. It feels good. It makes split pushing more of a strategy than it was previously to an extent because the closer aspects of the lane are still the same distance. It's just that middle section that was widened, but it still feels like you have more time, especially if they're pushed up a little bit further. I think it's great overall. Now let's move into the cheating frogs and the whole nine yards there. <laughs> Viking, I'll kind of let you kick that one off. <laughs> uh yeah so i saw this first um at, on a tiktok from another creator and i'm blanking on their name so i apologize but uh i was like what are they talking about this frogs thing and uh and i threw that into our group discord and it, it just it, i think i think it's hilarious um i'm i'm a you know big anti-cheat guy like most of us are we hate seeing cheaters but i think it's kind of fun um for this kind of approach to where it's not only are you getting kicked and removed from the game but you're also being like publicly shamed for it <laughs> uh and i and i think that's pretty neat i still feel bad for the enemy because they kind of have to you know deal with this guy who's basically non-existent on their game but i kind of hope that most people will take it that it's really funny seeing somebody hopping around uh, as a frog and not able to do anything. Um, and they already talked about how, at least as far as, I mean, there's no ranked, right? But they'll have like in their internal MMR and all that fun stuff. Won't be affected if a cheater is found in your games and all that fun stuff. So uh, hopefully it won't be a situation where people are, you know, upset or feel, you know, um, like their games are overly ruined. Um, but I, I think it's just hilarious. It's it's so funny. Um, I've only seen like one clip of of a frog jumping around. I haven't seen him in my own games because I haven't played enough probably. But uh, I think it's a great approach. And and yeah, throw tomatoes at him. I wish there was more that we could do to like f like mess with the <laughs> the frog, so to speak. Yeah. Well, and that's the, I love the aspect that they made it a choice for the team that the cheaters against. Right. That it's yeah. not it's not just they're tend to, turned into a frog, which would in itself be fine. But the yeah. fact that like if I am feeling like super sweaty, I just want to get to my next game. I can be like, no, I just want to move on, like end the game. Right. Let's go move on to my next right. one. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to select the frog for sure, because that's just <laughs> more fun to torture the frog every time. But absolutely. I think it's a great thing. Mangus, what about you? Uh, I think uh, the cheating. Um, I haven't I haven't seen anybody turn into a frog like like we we've discussed i've played far more than you guys and i still haven't seen it happen um i think the cheating was far more prevalent when there were far fewer players either that or it was just a smaller sample size um but yeah I, you know back when we first started playing seeing like 100 people 100 games going at once was like holy shit there's a lot of people playing today you know and back then it seemed to be far more prevalent um you know uh, 
and, it, and it's hard to tell if somebody's cheating like it, they just might be really good at headshots hmm. you never you never know somebody might just be skilled but then like you'll go back you look at the replay system and it's like okay great talent is shooting arrows at my head but he's hitting the wall because i'm behind the wall it's like he's definitely aimbotting like every shot is placed directly on my head if i and every and like oh the guinness wall goes up and he's still shooting directly at my head even though i'm behind the guinness wall there's no way he could possibly see me like you see that a lot i see you see i've seen a lot of haze mm -hmm. um abusers using aimbot but i haven't seen it uh nearly as much since they really opened deadlock up to a much larger player base yeah i've only seen one cheater in all of my games so far i was in the lane against them and it was one of those that like i'm not quick to call out a cheater but I was so like, there's no way this guy isn't cheating. My whole team didn't believe me. And then they went up against him and they're like, oh, that guy's cheating. I was like, you see? <laughs> that was a vindicta, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Dude, that I was remember nuts. you showed me that clip. She was just ding, 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 yeah. ding, oh ding, 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 like, ding, 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 ding. But I think the other thing they implemented with this is that cheat detection, anti-cheat, right? It's not mm -hmm. just when players, enough players report somebody, they can then turn into a frog. If the anti-cheat catches them, they also can turn into a frog then. So I, again, I think they're hitting it out of the park with this kind of stuff. Now let's move on to the structured lane setup that's that was new that this patch as well, which is the one, two, two, one setup. So the dual lanes are always in the center. Solo lanes are always on the outer side of things. I, I think for me on this, I think this was much needed. It, it was hard to really strategize right when we're playing together and for, for it to randomly be like two one one two or two one two one or one two two one or whatever it may be it's hard to create consistency around that because the, right. you never know the dual lane i then have to remember which game to which game was the dual lane in and all those kinds of things so i think this is a great change now i just want them to add the ability for me to preference not choose uh, i'm okay with not choosing but preference solo lane or dual lane and that way I can kind of hopefully hopefully get one or the other, similar to how they do the hero preferencing as well. What do you guys think? Oh, that'd be really cool to see because I love the solo lane personally. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people hate it and they want to always be in a duo. I almost always want to be in a solo lane. So that that would be great if we had some sort of preference. I do love the stability that they've added with the one, two, two, one. Um, mm -hmm. It also makes things a little more fair. A lot of times if you had like the uh, two, two, one, one, um, if that, you know, if there was a purple, that two lane, that, that two man on the purple lane gets their asses kicked and is getting pushed in. It's much harder if it's two, two, one, one for the entire team to rotate over and, and help that out. So I, I really like that they changed it up. Yeah. And I think the opening up because the dual lanes are in the center, they have both lanes to then go rotate to rather than I, I if mm -hmm. they put the dual lanes on the outside, they can only rotate one direction on both sides, which right. would have felt much worse. So I think they the chose the right lanes for it as well. Viking, what about you? Where are you at? Uh, I mean, I think you the 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 nail on the head for me is exactly what you the, your last point, which is that with this change, I kind of feel like they missed the ball by not implementing also a preference opportunity. Because like, let's say for example, I'm playing Bebop and I get put into that solo lane, and I've only ever played a Bebop as a duo as a support character, um, and I'm not in comms with people, and so I can't get a lane swap. My my game is just not going to be as much fun. Is it impossible to play? Probably not, but it might not be the ideal way to play. It might not be the most efficient way. And then not only is like the laner that I'm going up against probably going to have an, a, a, an opportunity to get more fed, but then my other teammates are having to deal with an underfed Bebop, who's, all that stuff. And so it just that part kind of is a is a feels bad in a otherwise good choice like it's a cool thing to finally just be like because i felt like there was a moment where it's like they wanted it to be player innovation like you know figure out like what makes sense they didn't want to like put us into you know the traditional moba lanes in the way that you know we're all used to kind of maybe doing it especially from like league of legends or dota you know those kind of mindsets but at some point, you kind of just, I think, as the dev, have to put structure into place. So that way people can start to, you know, not necessarily be meta frogs, but at the same time, 
start to strategize on how they play their characters consistently, knowing what the benefits are. Also get used to certain lane aspects, like, you know, of like timings and like uh, all that stuff. It matters so much, especially at a higher level. Um, new players, it's probably not as big of a deal because they're just trying to focus on the basics. But like I can see in, in higher level play, not having that consistency of knowing, you know, what lane you're going to be in, um, not knowing whether or not, you know, the enemy is going to follow the typical structure versus what your team structure usually is. And so having them basically commit to it is good. But I feel like they could have also been like, we'll add this preference thing too. It just doesn't seem like it would be that hard from I think, a dev standpoint. And to echo that, even like a lot of the characters can kind of flex between a carry or a more support oriented style, sure. right? The one that is the hardest to do that with is Dynamo. And getting stuck, put on, selecting Dynamo as like your top preference and then getting stuck in the solo lane feels right. so terrible sometimes because just like the, my whole character is built around helping other t people on my team and now right. for the first 10 minutes we'll call it i am now by myself mm -hmm. right and especially when people won't swap with you ivy felt like that in the early days where people didn't realize she had so much freaking damage for some reason <laughs> um but uh, dynamo is really like the main one that that kind of exists with dynamo is a pretty hardcore solo laner bro oh i've been dominated by dynamo solo lane. Yeah. don't get me wrong but like he's the most. I, I do hear what you're saying. His kit does lend itself more to a two-two lane. Yeah, for but sure. Yeah, a good dynamo will just stomp oh. you in a fucking solo. Hundred <laughs> percent. I have a feeling though, a guy who who mains dino is not going to be used to playing him in a solo environment necessarily. If the if he's been playing him as a solo right and likes to go that route and has a build and understands all the matchups but if they're used to being in the supportive role and they're used to being you know that it, it that's the part it doesn't matter whether you're playing like infernus support and that's your main if you prefer that style of play and there is a way that that works like a kill lane or something like that and then you get thrown off into a solo lane and you're just like oh, i don't know how to do all of this um, the lanes are way different. Everything's, you know, uh, why are people showing up here randomly? I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what are the timings? Like, it, it just is, uh, it's just a feels bad and, and an otherwise good idea. And that's no. the part. So it's like, it, it, it almost offsets like, yay, we got this structure, but we can't really in use the structure to its fullest capabilities uh, as the player base. So and I think, so I I'll pose this question it. to you guys and I'll kind of give my thoughts after you guys answer if we get the solo lane versus dual lane preference option, mm -hmm. do you think we should also have a color preference option? So I guess Mangus, I'll have you answer that first. I think it would actually make more sense to just have a color preference option. Do away with it's the same uh, thing. Uh, basically. Duo's yeah, solo. you're right. It's the right. same thing. Yeah. If you pick purple, you're picking a solo lane. So mm -hmm. you can maybe preference. If you really want solo lane, you could preference purple, yellow or pink. A lot of people call it pink. I think it's purple. I, I say purple. <laughs> there, there, there's there's a hot take for you. Post in the comments below. Is it? Yeah. If you think it's purple or pink. I, I don't know which one would be better for like the health of, of Q times, because uh, I don't know how it would it would impact that. Um, I guess if you say that, you know, you preference purple, but uh, but you just want solo as a whole. So like when you pick purple, you just want solo at the same time. So like if you don't get purple, you're not going to be like, oh, well, then I want duo. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's a, a good call on it. Um, and I definitely do not want them to go like the Overwatch route where you're picking DPS tank or, For you sure. know, whatever, or picking as a support. I don't think that that's. Um, or even like in, in, in League where you're picking a support lane or a carry lane. I don't think that, that this game needs to go that route. I, I do think, though, that it should go like solo duo. Um, and well, I think what are the, the colors? I don't know if that matters necessarily. Um, and I do like, though, that the game tries to prioritize people who are in a uh, group already. Um, but again, if we're in a group, but we both prefer to play solo, but then they put us into duo... And our champions are more solo, not duo compatible. That also feels bad. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> they've done a lot of work. <laughs> I think generally they've done a good job with making sure the heroes feel independent, that they sure. don't need a role, right? I'm not queuing for support. I'm not queuing for utility. Right. I'm not queuing for any of those kinds of things, right? It is just, I'm, I'm queuing for this hero. And regardless of where I am, for the most part, I can do whatever it is I want to do on that hero. Um, I generally, I, I think Mangus, you, you were, had the best option there of when you're queuing, you're queuing for the lane instead of a, la a lane preference in terms of solo duo. 
that and I think similar to what they've done with the heroes, it would not be a I'm always guaranteed purple. It's more it's a I want solo lane if I can get if I have to get yellow instead of purple for that, it is what it is. Right? Same thing with the duo side of things. I the thing I mixed about on it is I don't know that I would like that much structure. I think there's an amount that like putting me if I'm prefer, preferring solo lane and it just randomly picks between yellow and purple, right? That I have to adapt to the game. I'm on the opposite side. It's like the equivalent of playing red side or blue side in other MOBAs, right? Mm -hmm. Is it's I it's I'm mirrored on the opposite side, but I'm still playing a solo lane, right? If I'm playing top in league, for instance, red versus blue side, it's different, but I'm still playing in the solo lane. And that's where I think that picking a specific lane may be detrimental, um, but it'll be interesting to see what the, they do with it. The only reason I can see for picking a specific lane is, it, you know, depending on if you're Amber Hand or Sapphire Flame, uh, if you're in one of the lanes, um, you're going to have uh, one camp mm -hmm. right next to your lane, whereas your opposing laner has does not have that one. That uh, Yeah, has a two camp, but... Four minutes you later, know, it, five minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's <laughs> ju it's just as close to go to take one of the other two camps as it's to take that. And anyway, it, it gives a little bit of a benefit to that to that lane. But anyway. Yeah. I cool. want whatever one they can implement first and fastest. That's that's <laughs> the one that I think is the best choice currently. I think for them showing what they've done, I don't think first or fastest is a problem. It's which do they yeah. actually want? Because they could do yeah, both right. of them in the same amount of time based on what we've seen them change massively in just these handful of patches. They and and that could quick. just be me being the newbie speaking. I just don't care. Just let me have a preference. Like, yeah. And I don't even care about, like, because to an extent, I think that for the health of, like, queue times, like, not always getting your role is, is kind of, you know, you should be able to play multiple roles or you should get used to, you know, what it's like to play roles. Like I, I know in league, for example, I used to get so annoyed when I'd have to get play jungle because I got auto filled in a jungle. But at the same time, then I also understand so much more about the game from a different perspective than I would have and understand those champions and their the the things that I would maybe gripe about with my jungler. Now I have like a little bit of like, oh, that's why they couldn't be there because they got these timings and that stuff. And like so you hopefully if you're approaching the game with, you know, authenticity, you get a little bit better of an understanding uh, from the different lanes that you might get associated with and, and characters and all that fun stuff. Um, I, the hard part, I think, is is the, again, when you're trying to learn how to play the game as a new player and you're you have preference you know lottery on a hero preference lottery on a lane it can be a little bit like daunting to cue whether or not you're going to get what you're decent at because nobody wants to show up into a game and feel like they're the problem all the time um and so it it, it can be a bit intimidating if they're not figuring out a way to make that more approachable for the new players versus maybe people who are a lot more experienced with playing multiple roles, playing multiple, you know, uh, characters. Um, and I don't know how they exactly determine that necessarily, but I, I do think that that is something they should have to, to take into consideration if they want the, the, the health of the game to keep going up, which I think it's showing that it has great potential. Yeah. Anyway. So let's move into our last thing about the patch, which is the gambler, the sinner sacrifice machines, now offering permanent stat buffs as well as the souls that you get out of them. So for those that don't know, these are the machines that you have to punch five times in heavy, heavy melee or 10 times if you're doing light melee, and then you'll get a bunch of souls and a permanent stat buff afterwards. Mangus, how do you feel about adding the stat buff to the Sinner Sacrifice machines? Oh, I freaking love it. It makes them so much more worth it. Uh, they, were all, they were always worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they weren't always worth the time. Like, um, especially later in the game, a lot of times you can clear a two camp way faster than you can just, than you can sit there and heavy melee that machine. And you do want to heavy melee it because it does deal damage to you whenever you melee it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's slightly faster. Yeah, it's, it's like a third of a second, but it is slightly faster. And it's just, it's just all around great. It really makes it worth it to take those things. Uh, the, the, the earn buffs add up so much mm -hmm. um, and can really take people off guard with how valuable those things are. Um, I see so many people walk past them why just <laughs> seriously take a quick second <laughs> smash that thing and all of a sudden you have four percent more ammo yep or you have plus three spirit or something it's like holy shit man like so why are, why are you passing this up yeah it's the golden, free the golden idols were already amazing as an addition whatever patch that was weeks and weeks and weeks ago right and i think Months adding ago. the signature sacrifice 
machines having that permanent buff as well make them I, I have seen so many games prior where the center sacrifice machines are never touched they're mm -hmm. always up on the map <laughs> i never have to worry about it if i'm ever like i've got no camps to go to well, i guess i'll go take a center sacrifice machine like i got nothing better but now every game i've gotten in since the patch people are like fighting over these center sacrifice machines i'm going out of my way to get them because they're guaranteed permanent buffs you just it's worth it every single time you go for them for sure viking what about you i didn't know it gave permanent buffs <laughs> so i've been grabbing them uncontested by the way i've had i've been every time i'm walking about like oh hey that machine i can punch because i just like the sound and i get a bunch <laughs> of souls and so since i feel like i'm usually behind on souls anyway i'm just like yeah let me go punch this thing this is free 90 free for me so i had no idea that i was getting permanent buffs too i just thought i was awesome and uh and, and getting an advantage by getting free souls out of the deal so that's news to me. Uh, comment below if it was news to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they're worth it. Go for them. Uh, also, yeah. we'll, we'll have our um, tip of the week in just a second. But another tip, Mangus, you mentioned the urns in general. Go for the urns, people, please. It's a buff for it's souls for your entire team. Please go for the urns more than you do. It's so worth it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, the boxes one is a big one because when I when we first started playing, it didn't feel like the boxes were they were it felt more like they were just cosmetic things that you could occasionally like, you know, do your, your best impression of Zelda and just break them. And, you know, and it was whatever. Now, dude, there's little mini buffs in there all the time, like a lot. I'm like, and I'm playing McGinnis. So if I get that one that gives me ammo and fire rate, I'm just like, I feel like I'm shooting a, you know, laser pew pew. It's great. <laughs> it, it's freaking cool. So uh, again, I, those are all new things that I'm learning while just running around on the map. But uh, yeah, so it, it, it's cool. I do. I do appreciate it. I do want to add two quick things that we didn't have on the sheet for the patch notes that do I it. think we should bring bring yeah. up really quickly is they did add quick casting to oh the my game. God. Which a yes. lot of people, oh, yeah. Holy a lot of people crap. were... Uh, really wanting and yeah. then the other thing is the private lobbies because there have mm -hmm. been quite a few tournaments for deadlock going already so they've already implemented private lobbies to make that a heck of a lot easier let them do some pick bands and stuff like that yeah well Ooh. i loved with the private lobbies too they implemented that the patch prior but it was a command that you had to enter you couldn't just do it from the normal menu basically it was like we know you guys are doing this here's the quickest fix we can give you to do that <laughs> on official servers because they were all running servers locally whoever was hosting the tournament and so oh. there was a difference there than what the players were used to in terms of ping differences and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So they rushed something out. The, the UI on it was terrible. They admitted it was terrible, said it's temporary, but here's the thing. And then the patch afterwards said, here's a better UI interface for it now. Here's the way you can actually do it as part of the normal queuing system. And it fantastic change. Yeah, it's They're so, so bad to patch things in. I will have to say of, of that, from the oh. tournaments, you had the stupid kudzu Ivy build that that got patched and fixed real quick. <laughs> uh, it, oh, I wouldn't say it's fixed. I think they did a good job with that nerf because it didn't hamstring the build. It just made it a little less effective. So it's not catching sevens in their ult or gray talons trying to fly over kudzu and getting mm -hmm. hit by it. But no, they did. A, I think they did a great job in how they <laughs> talents in general. They approach it very carefully. They don't immediately just like kneecap something and then maybe bring it back up afterwards. Except for maybe Viscous. That first patch after Viscous came out, they kneecapped Viscous pretty hard. But mm. a lot of the patches they do, and especially the willingness to do micro patches in between, three or mm. four is like the average they've done between big ones, of like, great, this Ivy build has popped up. Let's quickly put the kibosh on that a little bit, see what that does, and then if the next big patch really needs it, we can go further. I, so I think they've done a great job there. And what was the second thing, Mangoose? You said you had two things that we weren't in the patch. Oh, the other thing was the quick cast. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Which I love. I, I love quick cast and everything. It was the most frustrating thing on Seven when I was <laughs> playing him the other day because I was self-cast his bomb because I have it on double tap. Uh, but I fixed that. I changed the key bind. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, big fans of that. Any last thoughts on the we were patch? in that call? I mean, because he's like, why don't you just quick cast it? And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Quick cast. I love quick cast in every game I play. So big fan of that one. I was Speaking on a of loving things, I, I know I don't want to do too much of it, but again, coming back as a new player, one of the coolest things has been the ropes. 
to get up onto the because mm -hmm. today just in a game that we were playing um we were you know chasing guys down and the rope came into play and i hadn't really seen it outside of just me fooling around and climbing up there but i hadn't really seen it in like a combat situation and we get up there and it's the ice guy um i'm blanking on his name kelvin. but kelvin. kelvin yeah and he's doing a, an ice tower that, that we're we're trying to like fight him on this roof and he's building a tower and it just it was it, the verticality of it and like and the change I was say. of like <laughs> yeah it just it just felt so like different than any other shooter hero shooter moba whatever you want to call it it just felt dynamic and it felt interesting it's like i i i'm not going to get that every game probably i don't think but it was cool in that moment that we had this thing going on and, you know, and it just was, it just kind of shocked me. I just didn't expect it to feel as, uh, as fun as it did. And, um, I know that, uh, coming from like the Paragon days, that was a big conversation point for a lot of players was like, you know, where's the verticality? How come, you know, we're playing in this 3d space, but you know, it's always feels like on a 2d environment or very rarely does it feel like we get a lot of height. And, I feel like in this game, not only just the way you get into lane, you're up in the air, um, the way that you can like double jump up in the air. Like there's just so much verticality opportunity and it doesn't feel oppressive either. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it's it, it. They really found a good way to make it feel right um, that you can be up in the air doing really cool things. Um, and adding the ropes was just a really cool thing that I hadn't played with really that much. And uh, getting to do it in combat today was was a lot of fun. I, I was really, really surprised by it. So and I'll, yeah, I'll put something out there because I know Mangoose is about to say this or is definitely thinking it, is the ropes inside those buildings to climb up where they have a middle level and then the top level, those need to change. I was originally on the camp of like, I don't care that much. And now since I've been trying to go for those senior sacrifices on the one side where there's two of them in that room, getting in that room is the biggest pain in my ass. It's wild. I told you, dude. <laughs> I kind of wish they were more like... um zip line things like instead of like where you're climbing up the rope i mm. felt it felt more like a zip up i think that because you already have like the zips going into the lanes i kind of feel like you've got like that zip line mechanic already in your mindset uh i think that would because it's also sometimes it looks a little depending on the animation it looks a little janky <laughs> the way they're climbing yeah. the rope so I, I i they could it's all in early access i just think the ropes are cool I, sure. I hope that it, and what i've noticed is uh even just on the sideline of keeping up with it because you guys are talking about it all the time and i just think the game is cool so even when i wasn't playing it it's how fast they are to make changes and how fast they are to like try to do what they think the players are going to enjoy while also trying to keep the game feeling interesting as devs uh which is a lot of times i don't feel like it's talked about but you know these these devs seem like they're actually having like a great time making their game and and innovating on the game and that they have like this it feels like a really like just this like do whatever you guys want throw it at the wall and if it sticks fantastic if it doesn't eh, whatever and um you know you just don't see that approach as much anymore and so it's, it's just very refreshing uh even sometimes fr frustrating probably but it is really cool to see how much in just like three months the game has changed so dramatically from when I first started playing and put in my the majority of my hours to it within the last week. It's just wild. And it's have you found, have you cool. found the jump pads yet? What? Have you found the jump pads yet? <laughs> I knew no. that was going to be the response. People that have been playing as long as I have still don't know that there's jump pads in the game. Seriously. There's where are jump pads? They're like little vents. You'll see the vent on the ground, the air coming out of it in a direction. If you stand on it, it'll launch you in that direction where the air is going. Oh, do you know what another one I never used, but I know exists is the teleporters. And then, oh, speaking of another thing that is a tip for newbies, uh, in some of the like little uh, side bridges is a buff that you run over oh. it and you get like a little buff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that one was there until today. I was running <laughs> and I was like, what's that thing over there? Where do you, where the idol used to come down from the yeah, sky. Say, when you first started playing, that's where the idol came down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, ran yeah. idol I, into the mid tower. Yeah, now now there's like this little buff vent thing. And I was like, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Another little cool thing that they had. I know there's so many. At, in the base, the little wisps coming up. If you're just a oh, few yes. souls short, mm -hmm. so cool. So cool, big fan, because then you're not just sitting there, you know, with your thumb up your butt, you know, like waiting for idle thing. You have something to click and press and do. And I, I just I think it's a neat little addition. I, I, I don't 
And it's not something it's you're going cool. to farm a full item off of by right. any stretch of the imagination. It's purely right. there that if you're 10 souls off after you died or you went back to heal, it right. just give me those 10 souls. Now I can buy my item and move on. Right. Yeah. It's 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 really neat. Very neat. Um, I, I could go on and on. Probably there's like a whole <laughs> thing of stuff that they've added since I played last, like, you know, the item shop and now more how much more innovative it is now for like people to put up their builds and like mm -hmm. the descriptions of the builds. I, I like I said, there's so many things that are just it's just being done right it's being done intelligently and and there's still so much more i know that they're going to be doing and there's so much more i want them to do um so even as a guy who's been kind of just watching on the sidelines for for most of these last couple months it's been really really neat to see so um yeah there you go i should like start a segment of like newbie <laughs> tips that jeremiah didn't know <laughs> perfect well any other final thoughts before we move into our tip of the week no. Perfect. I don't we'll think. transition to that. We'll be right back. Today's locked in tip of the week is sliding to gain unlimited ammo. Gain momentum and press crouch to see an infinity symbol for ammo. While sliding, you'll never run out of bullets. While this is great when fighting enemies, you can also use this to your benefit when taking objectives like the tier one guardians. Simply slide down the stairs while shooting them to deal significantly more damage when possible. When on the stairs, hold the back key and press crouch to begin sliding. To cancel, simply press the forward key. This tip can also be utilized in other places around the map, like some tier three guardians, and also in some jungle camps. It takes some practice, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be doing a lot more damage in no time. Let us know in the comments where you think this mechanic is the most useful around the map in Deadlock. Now, back to the show. Perfect, guys. So tip of the week, sliding to do more damage. Mangus, we talked about that earlier a little bit, but like Mangus, talk about your experience in learning it. Cause I know that was the thing that when it first kind of was figured out, <laughs> it was like, this is really cool. And then we went into a game. It was yeah. like, this is impossible to do. And now it feels natural for, I'm sure both of us. That, that, that was another one that the tournaments kind of brought about. Uh, Fox McCloud brought it up to me and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Backsliding <laughs> on the stairs. And then, you know, once he showed me how to do it, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, sliding in general to conserve ammo is something you should always do on any hero, but especially on the in the early game when you're trying to, to get that Guardian down, if you do want to push that Guardian down, it's not always wise to do so. But anyway, yeah, backsliding, especially on a hero like Ivy, who just runs through her entire clip in like a second, um, backsliding like that just extends the amount of damage you put onto that thing so much. Um, and just sliding in general, uh, especially... Um, heroes that have an alternate right click, like uh, mm -hmm. Yamato's right click, where she just throws the big bomb, uh, but that consumes like three units of ammunition. If you slide, you can throw that bomb for free. Yeah, and it's just people don't don't slide enough in lane. There's actually I saw a thing earlier this week. I think it was Average Jonas made a TikTok, and then I tried it out in a game I played yesterday. But that on Shiv, his alternate right click blasts him backwards in a shotgun blast. If oh, you yeah, pull can that just off correctly, on? you can backslide forever with infinite ammo because you're just backsliding. But you have to know the map well enough backwards to be able to navigate around like obstacles and things. When I did it in my game yesterday, it was the most meme -y thing I've ever seen, but it was so much fun at the same time. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff I love that, to see that that's possible and people are still figuring that stuff out. Viking, what about you? I know you said while we were watching the tip of the week, you're like, I can't do that. So what? What? where are you at? Well, I, I was going to preface it myself because uh, I'm going to have a hot take here and say that I don't actually like it. And I don't think it's a it's a healthy <laughs> aspect of the game personally. And it's not just because I can't do it yet. Uh, I, I just think that it's. It, I don't know. I think it benefits some heroes more than it's going to benefit others. I do think that the sliding and not consuming ammo aspect is fine. I don't like the idea um, that you're sliding on stairs. It feels like and, and then therefore you're, you know, gaming the system to an extent it feels more like an exploit rather than a feature uh and so from that perspective i don't really think it's healthy for the game um and uh, and it also adds in a learning curve again for us new players that makes it it makes it very very hard if you're not mechanically capable of doing it to the same extent that somebody else is if you end up in a lane with those people um, you know, it just it's a feels bad man in moment and there's nothing you as the opposite player can really do about it unless you have some something in your kit that can stop them from being able to do it. Um, so I, I just don't like it from that perspective. I just think it feels more like an exploit rather than a feature. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe that's the intended aspect of it. Um, I guess it'll be up to Valve to, to let us know how that goes. But for now, use it and abuse it, I guess. Get your MMR and I if think you can. 
Uh, to your credit there, I don't know. They've never said blatantly that they don't think that's a healthy mechanic. But since it's been figured out, they have moved the guardians away from the stairs twice to mm. increase the distance of how close you need to be in order to do damage. And there's some of the lanes, it's a real sweet spot to be able to do the stair slide and still do damage to the guardian sometimes. And so mm. it's interesting to see, uh, maybe they're going to do something about it. Maybe they're working on it now. But they, like I said, they haven't said one way or the other that it like, yeah, we love this, this is intended, or no, we don't, this is not intended. So right. it'll be interesting to see one way or the other. I, yeah. I think that um, what, what Jenna said is just a great description of deadlock in general. Is that an exploit or a feature? <laughs> because there's a lot of things at deadlock that just seems like it's a total exploit but it's 100 percent intended and a feature 100 um, you know if an ammo was slotting when we first saw that we were like there's no fucking way that's that can't be like a, the the thing that they want no that's what they want that's 100 yep. percent intended i remember right. you mentioned him earlier fox mcleod said that to a message and i was like compiling a list of notes for like newbies of like here's all the things you need to know <laughs> right and in those notes i put in parentheses might be a bug like when i put sliding gives infinite ammo like yeah it was just one of those things that was so unknown but clearly is part of it uh and now for all those realism nerds out there it breaks realism to just slide and have infinite ammo in my magazine so i think they should remove it for that reason because <laughs> uh, you know all of this is so real but yeah <laughs> this will move us into one of our last segments which is video recommendations from the community mangus you had the re recommendation this week for fred the finch and we'll have yes. a link to that video in the description so mangus kind of tell us about what this video is the, that kind of uh, stuff if you if you want to learn how to play yamato and you want to learn how to play spirit yamato not gun yamato there's there's i think the top build right now is weapon dps yamato which is a great build but it only works if you're really ahead i find whereas the spirit build will work in whatever situation you can come from behind with the spirit build and um he just it has a lot of great tips on how to play um yamato is one of those kits uh when i first saw it i thought it was the most un unintuitive dog shit kit i'd ever seen in any moba but it, it's a kit that will only work with deadlocks movement system um the you know they took everything from a first person moba added some shit or, or a third person mode, but added some shit, um, then took everything from a third person shooter, added some shit, and then combined it all together instead of just trying to like mishmash the two together and take aspects of certain ones. But yeah, her kit only works when you have that third person shooter movement aspect to it. Um, you have to roll forward when you and, and slide around so that you're p playing peek a boom with her with her one. Like as as soon as you come come around that corner, you're winging that that shit out there so they can't dodge it. Otherwise, you're just sitting in the middle of the lane like an asshole, charging up your power <laughs> slash for two seconds that's not going to hit anybody, and you're just taking a sleep dagger to the face or you're getting bebop hooked or whatever. There's there's a lot of intricacies to playing Yamato that um that uh, Fred the Finch goes over. Uh, his build is in Deadlock. I think his, he goes by Ronald, actually, in the game. But um, really great Yamato player, really great tips um, on how to use her well. Uh, another quick tip, too, her grapple. To, the best use of her grapple is to not let it hit. Don't look for the damage from the grapple because there are so many frames from that animation. Um, you cancel just before you hit somebody and then you right click punch so that you get the big damage from her right click bomb and the and just a quick melee punch. And mm. then you're slid past them so that then you can turn around and there's no way they can escape from the power slash. So just really great tips all around for Yamato if you want if you want to learn how to play her a little bit better. Yeah, and like when I see other Yamato players that aren't Mangus, right? I, they are very straightforward in their abilities in a way that like it would seem like Yamato needs to be played or wants to be played, right? But then I watch you and you're like finding the smallest of gaps somewhere where you can power slash right through it. And I'm just like, I never would have tried like, that as Yamato. That's just not, yeah, the bridge gap. Like, that's exactly what I'm right talking there, about. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, absolutely incredible. Definitely go check out Fred the Finch's Yamato Guide. Uh, appreciate Mangus you coming with that video recommendation for us this week and now we're going to move on to final thoughts we'll start with Viking then go to me and then go to Mangus and then we'll wrap it on up so Viking final thoughts for this week 
Uh, well, so I just I, I quickly wanted to touch on Yamato real quick because I know when we first started playing, uh, we we were like, this is by far the worst character. Like they, <laughs> she just stuck, and it, because it, she felt like she was like a uh, like a like a, I don't know like a, a bargain Genji right from Overwatch. Like she she had like the kit that you kind of expected from Genji, but not quite the execution. And I don't know. So uh, when <laughs> Manku started saying like, oh. I, I, I'm a Yamato main now. Like I, I figured her out. I'm playing like there's so many things. I'm like, what? No, you're not. You're just trolling is what you're doing. But like as he's describing and look at his face right now as he's describing playing her. Look how proud Papa he is over there. Like he just <laughs> feels like you and you deserve it because I mean, you guys know me. I'm a support player. Like I always gravitate right. toward the tanks or the sports. I'm never right. the DPS guy, especially not the quick reaction. High skill cap DPS guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> And for some reason, Yamato just spoke to me. <laughs> yeah, I, but that just makes me happy. Like, it, it's one of those things about this game that that there's there's so much nuance and, and hidden tech still about just the way the characters are designed um, and, and the builds that you can go with. Like, I mean, we didn't go into it in this, but and there's so many videos about it, like all the different items and, and, and item itemization things you can do with each of them. But it's like... I think that's what it gives me. So this will be part of my final thought. I think that's what, even though I haven't been playing a lot, my favorite part about thinking about this game has been the fact that there's just so much potential. And I, I know I'm not like the target audience anymore. I'm 40 years old. I, I just don't have that competitive, you know, crazy spirit anymore. Um, and, and when I do play competitive games, I'm always frustrated that I'm not as good at them as I want to be. Um, but I can still appreciate and love that, that that a game like this exists um, in a day and age where it seems like everybody wants to be the next best FPS. This gives you FPS MOBA strategy. There's just so many things. And I, I can't wait to see the the, the range that it, it, it continues to encompass. Like, it just feels like a lot of games smashed into one in a really really cool way um and in a lot of frustrating ways like i i get very very frustrated in this game um maybe even more so than i've gotten in league of legends games which uh, maybe for you league players that's that's saying something but uh it's it's a cool game and i'm really excited to to, to see the new ones i know there's a, supposed to be a new character coming out relatively soon holiday or something like that is that one there's a couple said? there's a couple okay. that are done effectively but they yeah. changed them up before they released so there's still quite a few. I mean, Mirage was less done than some of the others and right. came out first. So really, I don't trust anyone is coming before right. another one. <laughs> the amount of content that they're pumping out, because again, I feel like we've only really been playing this game uh, for three, maybe four months tops. And we've had Early major team. changes to the map, major additions of, of items and changes to items, major, you know, characters added in. Like, it's crazy. And it wasn't even supposed to be in most of our hands. So it, that's what's even cooler about this is that it, it became this viral sensation of a secret project that Valve was working on and they couldn't keep it secret anymore <laughs> because it was just too cool. And uh, and I just love it. I, I love the way that the community has embraced it. Uh, well, maybe not the CS kids. They seem to really hate it. But outside of them, uh, it seems like it, people are like really excited for something. Um, and I know a lot of our viewers are, are old Paragon heads and, and they miss those days. I, I really would encourage most of those guys to give this game a shot. Put in the hours. You know, I take it from the newbie in the group. It will be frustrating at first. It's going to be hard. You know, find your three characters. Oh, one of the cool features for you newbies is you can play bots by yourself and you can change the difficulty so you can ramp it up to your skill level. So and the hard bots can be really actually hard. They can be. So um, I, I think that's that's it. That's my final thoughts. Get the game a go. It's super fun for you. It's even it's it's not newbie friendly, but I think that, it, that anybody who wants to put in the effort to to get decent at it can be yeah and that's it there well i think go. for my final thoughts uh first i would like to say thank you to i think it was ign who wrote that article before the public lift happened and then everybody freaked out because they were they didn't hit accept on the terms and conditions whatever and then like a week later the game went public and we everybody could talk about it the whole nine yards if that was a contributing factor thanks ign uh, but uh, generally i i was working on this them. I think they've done a great job implementing these changes, fixes, ideas. New characters are all unique and fun still. Uh, they've done a great job, even in 6v6, which sounds like it could get really hectic really fast, and it does at times. I've played mm -hmm. 5v5s or 3v3s that are more hectic, the hectic feeling, and that, like, I don't know what's going on. 
even with less bodies than this does. And they've done that. They've struck that balance really well, I think, compared to a lot of other things. So yeah, mm. huge hats off to the Valve team. Uh, and I think that's it for my final thoughts. Mangus, what about you? Uh, I just want to touch on something that Viking said earlier, was talking about, uh, you know, you can't do in Deadlock what you do in Overwatch, which is Q as a tank, Q as a support, Q as a DPS, because uh, we'll take... Uh, but this is one of the things I just absolutely love about Deadlock. We'll, we'll, we'll take Kelvin, for example. Is he a disruptive support healer? Is he a high weapon damage carry? Or is he a burst mage? The answer is yes. <laughs> you can build him in any ways and be highly successful with Kelvin, um, just depending on your play style. Um, I kind of shit on the, the weapon damage Yamato build but it works it's a great build there's nothing wrong with that build there's nothing wrong with playing uh weapon damage Yamato I mean personally I think if you're gonna if you want to shoot somebody in the face and pick somebody with a fucking gun <laughs> leave me my leave me my, my mage Yamato but uh <laughs> but yeah I mean it's just the 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 item system which I'm sure we'll get into in a future episode sometime is just amazing and uh, allows for so much counter building and and different builds for the different play styles that you want to bring to the table mm -hmm. no yeah absolute nail on the head well guys i appreciate you any last last thoughts before we end our first locked in episode viscous is super fun but uh i will never play him in a serious way <laughs> that's that's my final thought his ultimate is the worst i can't stand it it's so meme -y, but the rest of his kit is dude, the punch is one of the coolest abilities in the game bar none i'll argue with anybody in there I think it's just, it looks sick coming out of the ground. You can hit it off of walls, so it's punching right at you. It's it, You can disrupt your allies trying to do something cool on accident, of course. Uh, no, it, it's and the blob is also really fun. Like, I, I think Viscous as an idea is such a super neat character uh, design. I have not really seen something like him in another game, really. Uh, his ultimate is just terrible. Outside of that, <laughs> everything else is great. Well, I think I, I'm going to get you a t-shirt that says... Uh, I got fisted by Viscous. <laughs> this guy, I'll take oh it. my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, that the fist is cool. What do you want from me? Well, that's going to do it for our first Locked In episode. Everyone, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, we really appreciate it. We're going to do these shows weekly. I hope we'll see from there and maybe live in the future so you can participate live. Mm. We'll go from there. Leave your thoughts in the comments. If there's things you want to see us do differently, improve segments, whatever, we'll definitely look at those and take that into consideration. But for now, I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next week. It's never coming to console, so. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>